Peyton Thorne needs to light it up for the Auburn Tigers on Saturday. You are Locked On Auburn, your daily podcast on the Auburn Tigers. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Yes, welcome on into Locked On Auburn, your daily Auburn Tigers podcast. I'm your host, Zach Blackerby, and thank you so much for making Locked On Auburn your first listen every single day. We're dapping it up this Friday. Daryl Dapridge, Montgomery radio legend, hanging out with us. What are our official predictions for Auburn and Cal? We'll get to that as well as specific things to watch for, as well as some Cruton talk. But, Daryl, I think the main thing I want to see for the Auburn Tigers tomorrow against the Cal Golden Bears is Peyton Thorne letting it loose. Maybe not to the extreme that we saw him do it against Alabama A&M just because Cal's a better team than Alabama A&M. But I want to see him throw for 250 tomorrow. I think that's a healthy number. And I also think it'll be symbolic because this is the first time Auburn's playing a team that they played a year ago. He did not look good a year ago. I think it could be symbolic saying, hey, this is new. This is what we've done in a year and, and Peyton Thorne, I think, solidifies himself as saying, hey, yes, I am a much improved quarterback in a much improved situation than I was a year ago. Yeah, that's the factor is that I don't feel like Peyton Thorne has to throw for 250 yards for Auburn to win. But I think the statement that it makes and the value in the actual act and, and what it what it sends to the rest of the league is it's important to do that, that we are different. We're not going to win a football game ugly like we did last year by holding you in the teens, running it for 200 yards, and it being close. You can do that and win. Auburn can do that. I I feel like they can, you know, muck it up a little bit. Peyton Thorne cannot have a great game, and Auburn can still win. But that's not what you want. You want this team to be different. And the proof that they're different And the exhibit of that, the proof of concept, would be him looking so much better than last year and putting that on tape. It'd be it'd be great, and it'd be also you know exciting for the fans to see a coming out party of sorts for Cam Coleman, Keandre Lambert Smith, Perry Thompson. Like we saw glimpses, we saw glimpses against Alabama A and M, but they didn't play in the second half, which makes sense. Why would you play those guys in the second half when you're up fifty? But I want to see what a full. 60 minutes looks like of Peyton Thorne throwing to Cam Coleman and Keandre Lambert Smith. I want to see how a defense handles Auburn's offense for a full game, because I think it's going to kind of provide a blueprint for if it works or if it doesn't work, what other defensive coordinators at Auburn will play this year. Do they adjust to to what they do? Do they avoid what Cal did? Does Cal bring again, bring more guys uh, to, to the line of scrimmage? I think this is going to be a big deal as far as, okay, how do you stop Auburn? How do what's the best way to defend Auburn? Cal's obviously going to take their first stab at it, but I do think this is going to be a team and a roster that gives some defensive game plan some trouble this year. Cal could be one of them. Yeah. That's the thing is that obviously the number one objective and directive Saturday is to win the football game. Yes, But if you win the football game going away and look good doing it by being balanced, you accomplish two goals. The first is you win the football game. And the second is you have Arkansas and Oklahoma uh, defensive coordinators a little bit nervous about, okay, what do we do to game plan against Auburn? They do look balanced. Because here's the thing. People can say all they want, Zach, about, oh, that was just Alabama A&M. That was just Alabama A&M. If you do it at Cal, against Cal, all you have to do for reference is go back to last year and see what they did against Cal. As So you do have something to really compare it to if you look so much better and the passing game t- takes a step forward. There is something to draw from. You do that, then you accomplish some things down the road for defensive coordinators to have to plan for as well. Yeah, I, I think so. I think so. And look, we talked about this on the Wednesday edition of the show, Daryl. I think Cal's going to come out and say, hey, Peyton, you've got to beat us. We're going to focus on stopping Jarquez Hunter, Damari Austin, Jeremiah Cobb, whoever's in it running back, and even Peyton Thorne as a rushing threat. We're going to stop the run. We're going to put guys close to the line of scrimmage. We're going to load the box, and we're going to say, hey, if you can beat us, mm-hmm. great. We'll see, but I, I think Cal's going to bet 
and gamble that he can't do it consistently. And Daryl, if he does, if Peyton Thorne does get the ball consistently in the hands of Coleman or KLS or Perry or Robert Lewis, who apparently is a lot better looking in practice this week than, uh, than, than last week, got that note at the barnauburn.com from, from Kyle. But to me, I think this is the kind of thing that sets your offense up from a scheme standpoint to succeed later in the season because then all of a sudden, if you're a defensive coordinator, you can't load the box on early downs. And then Jarquez Hunter is able to pick up six consistently on first and 10, creating second and short. And, and that's what Auburn was so bad at a year ago was eventually converting on third down. It just sets you up if you win on early downs. And, and I think Auburn is going to be able to set the tone with that early. Yeah, and what else it does is it's doing a deep dive. Let's say at some point Cal says, okay, we're not just content with trying to load up to stop the run. We have this shutdown corner in Harris that will just try to take away Peyton Thorne's number one option. Me and you speculate on who that could be, right? Here's where having depth in the receiving room, though, will pay off. If Cal does that and Wilcox decides to do that and puts Harris, let's say, on KLS, well, what do you do with Lewis? What do you do with Cam Coleman, Perry Thompson? All these guys that also had nice games. Uh, I didn't mention this Wednesday, Malcolm Simmons. I mean, so th there's it, it just seems like it's it's going to be difficult to scheme if you just want to take away the run or even one side of the field and say, well, we can take away the run and take away Peyton Thorns. It may be Fairweather. We talked about that. What if they think Fairweather is the guy that's going to catch more balls than anybody tomorrow? All right. Then what do you do? I, I, I mean, listen, th that's why I'm a little bit excited, even more than the opener, to see – because I think there's some things that were held back last Saturday. I, I think there's sure. some things we're going to They only played a half. They did. I, I think from a, a scheme, a route tree, play calling – and I'm not talking about razzle-dazzle trick plays either. That That's a nice thing. Auburn's going to do some things Saturday and show some things that we didn't see last Saturday – and so that's why I'm really excited because I don't think – if they do what you just said and we and Auburn starts to loosen up that front four or front seven or whatever, Hunter and Austin and Cobb, all three, that the rushing game could go for over 250 yards. Be insane. Auburn wins handily if that happens. Auburn wins handily if that happens. Sounds like Freeze's message to the team this week has been make a statement. They're not overlooking Cal. This is a big deal to this team. So we'll see. We'll see what happens. It's hard not to bug. It's really hard not to bug talking about this game. Hey, we got some Cruton Nuggets. Um, Five-star offensive tackle. What's the latest with Andrew Babalola? As well as uh, some other things we're looking at specifically for Auburn versus Cal. Coming up right here on Locked on Auburn. Today's show is brought to you by our friends at LinkedIn Jobs. Yo, can you imagine hiring somebody using anything other than LinkedIn Jobs? It's too important. When you are hiring personnel for your company or your business, it's the lifeblood. Yeah. And why do you want to just absolutely leave it to chance or not be fully prepared? LinkedIn really, really helps with that process. No question. LinkedIn is not just another job board. It helps you hire professionals that you can't find anywhere else. And LinkedIn also knows that small businesses, they're wearing so many hats and they may not have the time or resources to hire. LinkedIn makes it so easy. So easy. You can post your job for free right now at linkedin.com slash locked on college. That's linkedin.com slash locked on college to post your job for free. Terms and conditions apply. Today's show also brought to you by our friends at Home Field Apparel. Daryl, before they even partnered with Locked On Auburn, I've bought and I, I've purchased several, several shirts from HomeFieldApparel.com. You have done the same. And look, obviously, most of the folks listening to this or watching this love Auburn. They've got some really cool vintage Auburn style apparel, but they've got them for all colleges as well, Daryl. So I mean, Home Field is a brand that you and I trust and love a ton. I love it because right away it was the throwback stuff, the retro stuff. I like that. Yeah, um, it was it, great quality. It's just a phenomenal. It, some of the some of the designs for the shirts it will really throw you back to a different era and age. It's pretty cool. 
Yeah. Yeah. So go to homefieldapparel.com. Use promo code WARIGLE24. WARIGLE24. All one word, no spaces. WARIGLE24 at homefieldapparel.com. The buzz isn't going away for five star offensive tackle Andrew Babalola. Sounds like Michigan and Auburn are just in a stalemate for this guy. We'll see when Auburn can get him on campus again. That's going to be important. But this isn't a kid that's going to be super enamored with NIL. This is a kid who's thinking about every aspect of his future, a really well-grounded, well-rooted kid. And I don't think it's even all about like winning championships. I think relationships with this kid, Babs, is super, super important. And Daryl, the buzz just isn't going away with him. No, and proof positive in that is that Babalola has Stanford in his top three. Some sites and don't pay attention. I, I I don't know why that you know some of these sites have Stanford leading and a couple different ones even over Michigan and Auburn. I believe it's a and our yeah. intel says it's a two horse race. Um, and then the other aspect of it is when other people start committing in this class, it's supposed to be a domino effect. And Babalola is definitely watching mm. that and looking mm -hmm. for that. And so the buzz and, and what we're hearing starting to build as far as this wave building is what may happen this weekend in the way of a, of a deuce night or anything like that. So when that happens or some other players start to, to pop for Auburn, uh, that's why you're starting to hear some, some radio silence pick up on Babalola is that it's there's some imminent – feeling to this now we'll see but there's chatter let's put it that way um and then uh i'm blanking on the name but the i really like him the four star uh or i guess he's a th sam turner the yeah. three star wide receiver is committed to georgia tech right now sounds like he's expected to be here this weekend as well uh, i really really like sam turner i do too and i think the sam turner situation now gets a little bit interesting with some some intel that C.J. Wiley, the Florida State commit, has kind of reopened his recruitment privately a little bit, and Auburn might be in contact. Very, very good wide receiver. Do you have enough room to take Wiley and Turner? I think it's a case if Turner was ready to commit, Auburn takes his commitment. They've been on him for a while. Mm -hmm. I just that's another name on the possibility tree that I heard, and it you know with the way Florida State started. Look, remember who Auburn was in big competition for for Usman Chroma. For a while, it was he was a Florida State lean, mm -hmm. and I think that's another reason why you're hearing the chatter and the buzz that Chroma is on the brink as well. So there's four or five names out there that, when we say on the brink, it could be this weekend, it could be before the end of the month. There's a, there's a lot that could happen, but I think a lot of these are imminent. I really do. Yeah, yeah. I mean, and Auburn picked up a lot of crystal balls last weekend. We'll see uh, if any come to fruition this weekend. Is this finally the weekend for Deuce Knight, Daryl? I think so. Uh, I think that, you know, we've been hearing that for a couple couple weeks now that it got pushed back to this weekend for a variety of factors. But this is a buzz that just keeps getting louder and louder and louder that it could happen this weekend. Yeah, yeah, that would be electric. No question about it. Especially like the timing of it. If it happens Friday night, okay, whatever. If it happens Saturday morning, okay, whatever. That's great. But who was it when Auburn whooped Arkansas last year and then somebody flipped like during Hughes presser? Was it Amaris? And he looked at his phone and said, That's a big one. No, that was when he was standing up. But yes, he did it was Amaris. He 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 hinted at it. He hinted at it at his presser. Yeah, because we were locked. Yeah. yeah, we may have been live or something when that yeah, happened. Yeah, he hinted at it. I don't remember, but that was that was electric. Like, yeah. could, do you do it after the game? Um, th yeah. there could be a lot of fun stuff that they do with that. So we'll see. We'll certainly see with that. As far as uh, aspects that you're looking at within the game, we just mm -hmm. talked about. You know, uh, is Cal? What happens if Cal tries to stop Auburn's rushing attack? What are some other factors for tomorrow's matchup between Auburn and Cal that you're really, really looking at? I want to see the, the the pocket get collapsed a little bit more and caved by Auburn's edge rushers. I, I'm not happy with two sacks against an FCS school. That's got to get – that's got to pick up. So Auburn's got to get some pressure on this sophomore quarterback who, you know, I get it. They're, they were in the Pac-12 last year. They've played in some big stadiums. This kid didn't play quarterback for Cal, I don't believe, last year. 
this is going to be the biggest crowd he's probably the end of the year. Sounds yeah. Like, I think he picked it up at the end of the year. So yeah. even then, I think this will be the biggest crowd that he's ever played against. And so Auburn needs to rattle him, needs to get pressure on him. That leads to number two, which, you know, you don't, I don't, the only aspect of Saturday night's game too, that I came away with a sour taste in my mouth was you should not be on the negative end of the turnover ledger. And I get it. It was it was late in the game, and there was the third or fourth string guys. And Jake Crane made a great point on your show. If you're up sixty to three and you're knocking the ball loose or stripping the ball, I don't know. I don't know if that happens, right? So, but I want to see Auburn win the turnover battle Saturday. I'd like to see a couple of interceptions. Uh, you know, with this kid coming in here, I, I, that's two. That's the second thing. And the third thing is just balance. Um, I love that Auburn came out five wide and threw it all over the place, and they may have to do that again. But I would like to see them rush it more than 18 times. Of course, they're going to have to. But yeah, I want to see yeah, some I balance. Think they will. Yeah, I, I want to see will. some balance. I think they will. Yeah. Yeah, to, to me, it's um, it's the other side of it, limiting Cal's pass rush. And a few Cal people have let us know that um, that their best edge rusher, according to them, sat out against UC Davis. And so we'll see exactly what that looks like as far as keeping Peyton Thorne upright. It appears that Tyler Johnson is a starting left tackle moving forward. We'll see uh, you know, if that storyline stays the same. But him and Xavion Miller, the two bookends on the, uh, on the offensive line, they're going to have a stronger test this week than they did last week. And so... They did a great job keeping Peyton Thorne's pocket clean. Can they do that this week? And, and and how does Peyton Thorne react if a guy does leak through? Like, is he able to use his speed at the same level he did a year ago? So th that that's one thing I'm looking at. And then, you know, alluded to it earlier, but like Robert Lewis, it seems like he's a little bit more healthy this week than he was a week ago. Does he have a larger role in this offense? I mean, he was kind of the forgotten receiver last uh last saturday against alabama a&m so how does robert lewis fit into this offense do you see less malcolm simmons because of that i doubt it but like you got to figure out a way to make them both work but those are those are the two things i'm looking at the most i wonder if the deep ball is going to be there as much because of the timing like like with the cows you know best edge rusher coming back and if they apply more pressure but there i've seen other people say this too when he threw it deep, he didn't hold the ball that long. Well, the the first one, the first touchdown to KLS, he had the opportunity to step up in the pocket and take an extra three seconds to do that. That's what I'm saying. That's all the difference in the it wasn't world. Three that you seconds, need. though. Like it wasn't three seconds. I'm talking about from the time he dropped back and set his feet to the time he actually let the ball go was three seconds. From the time he did that and stepped forward in the pocket, it was. Okay. I'm, not, I'm not talking about. You know, when he started to throw the ball, I'm talking about when he got to his mark, realized he had to step up in the pocket and then threw it. It was three seconds. So to let them guys get deep downfield, you do have to have a little more time to let that develop. Does Auburn switch up a little bit, go more slant, more quick hitters? Because now they do have guys that can are good with yards after the catch, too. You know, I mean, that, yeah, that I mean, that's, that's what Perry's guys, was. Yeah. I mean, you, you just, you absolutely can get in space. I mean, Caleb Burton thought it was a touchdown and slowed up and got caught at the 10. Yeah, I didn't love that. But he he got separation on a 10-yard, 11-yard slant. I mean, that that's what I'm saying. Fairweather, those guys. We did not see Auburn throw one swing pass or screen pass. Yeah. If that dude is elite as they say he is and is rushing up field with his ears pinned back, look for that too. And, mm -hmm. and Auburn has some guys in Hunter, Austin, and Cobb that can catch the ball out of the backfield and house it. So there's a lot left on the plate that hasn't even been eaten yet that Auburn can utilize. If The other thing you said, if they start crashing that edge rusher, Zach, and Peyton Thorne on the RPO, not the read option, but the RPO has the opportunity to hand it off because he sees that edge crashing, mm -hmm. Then you're through the first line of defense. There's a lot of different things. I'm very happy with who's calling plays and how they will adjust to whatever Cal's doing on defense. Let's put it that way. Yep, yep. Thorne was three of six for throwing passes deeper than 20 yards. Um, so I can't wait to see what that number is. I mean, I think he'll throw six passes that deep again, right? 
Well, I, I guess this is where I'm I'm just going to be honest and admit my ignorance. Is that 20 yards, 20 yards in the air or yes. just 20 yards? Okay. According to Pro Football Focus. Okay. Yes, got you. Yeah, uh, it's gonna he's gonna have to. I mean, we, you don't you don't have those shiny new toys without taking some deep shots. Trust me. Yeah. The play may I, be. I'm called. looking at this. Peyton's Peyton throw to his right was not good against Alabama A and M. You're right. So take that for what it's worth. Yeah, uh, yeah. Even the route that Perry ran started on the right, but ended up on the left side of the field by the time yeah, he I think, caught it. Uh, yeah, I think I guess charted as a between the numbers pass. So yeah. take that for what it's worth, but. Yeah, all in all, like uh, to me, when Auburn has the ball, I'm looking at the the rotation at slot receiver between Robert Lewis and Malcolm Simmons, and then them just protecting Peyton Thorne. I, I'm 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 really curious to see what exactly that looks like. Let's make our official picks. That's coming up right here. Unlocked on Auburn. If you don't have a ticket for the game, the best way to get one is download the Game Time app. Use code Locked On College. You'll get twenty bucks off. And you get to see your Tigers take on the Cal Golden Bears for the best price possible. Absolutely, you'll see where your your, your virtual seat where you where you're going to be sitting in the stadium. What it looks like they have those they still have those lightning deals the day of the game where mm -hmm. it's a little lightning bolt over the section that you'll want to click on where you get some savings there. Very convenient downloads into your ticket app immediately, and it's really a, a, a great feature to have. No question. No question about it. So uh, right now, take the guesswork out of buying tickets with Game Time. Download the Game Time app, create an account, and use code Locked On College 20 All one word, Locked On College 20 for your uh, first uh, for Wow, I can't read this. For $20 off your first purchase. Terms apply. Again, create an account and redeem code Locked On College for 20 bucks off. Download Game Time today. Last-minute tickets. Lowest prices guaranteed. Daryl, I'm going with 37 to 17 for uh for a big Auburn win, a statement win against Cal. Yeah, I I was I made my prediction Wednesday and I think I said 31-14. I want to change that to the same spread, but a 34-17 feels better to me. I think Auburn's going to score uh a little bit more and maybe Cal gets one of those late garbage touchdowns right or something that's that's towards the end of the game. I it's going to be interesting. I heard some things about uh, possible rain in the morning. Should get out of there by the time kickoff, but does that slow down a passing game at all? That mm -hmm. field drains really, really well, but I think all the rain is going to be out by the morning, and then you have some drying capabilities. So, I mean, I want Auburn to be balanced, like I said, and I think a 34-17 score with some balance on offense will be achieved. Yeah, I, I think so too. He did have three seconds when he threw that ball. You are correct. Thank you. You are correct. I don't think the edge rushers impacted that play, though, which is I did a poor job of saying that. But right. Regardless. Okay. Um, yeah, to me, like, do you think there's more? Do you think Auburn has more passing yards on Saturday or more rushing yards on Saturday? More, more passing yards by 25 yards. Okay, so still pretty balanced, though. Yeah, I'm going to say Auburn throws for 265 and rushes for 240. Wow. Do you think the drives are going to be, like, explosive? Or do you think this is going to be a situation where, like, Auburn actually has, like, a sustained drive for the first time this season? Oh, they'll have to have a sustained drive. I mean, what we saw – Last Saturday, it's not realistic. The first no, three possessions, right. the average time of possession was 22 seconds. I think they'll have both. I think, and you know, we talk about balance, and I guess my prediction is really pie in the sky with total yards. So I wouldn't be surprised if Auburn barely rushed for over 200 and threw for 250. I'd go with that too. But I think that when you talk about balance, it's not just what you get yardage wise. Balance can also be how you score. So will Auburn have some drives where they go 10 plays, four minutes? Will they have some quick hitters? I think they'll have both. And I think that shows balance on how you're able to score as well. Yeah, that would be clutch. That'd be crucial. I mean, because you can't score quick all the time or it's going to no. just nuke your defense. No, and you it's not going to happen. I mean, when you start yeah. playing in the SEC, you better be able to put some drives together, pick up some first downs. And I think Auburn's going to have to do that Saturday. We will see some of that Saturday. What's the likelihood, give me percentages here, 
on like Auburn just doing a full fledged. Wh- what's more likely? This being close, this being a, a one score game with five minutes left to go, or Auburn just absolutely routing Cal. Oh, I, I think the, the more I, I think about sixty percent of a one score game late in the game, uh, then that's absolutely likely. route. Yeah, I mean, because thirty four seventeen isn't an absolute route, and that's what I predicted. Like if I well, it, predicted- it depends. Like it, 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 if it's thirty four to ten, and then there's a garbage time touchdown. Yeah, at the end, like that, that. I mean, that's pretty. You know, it just depends yeah, on what that last score looks like. That's true. So you know, I'm thinking of a route of you know. 24 or more points that you win the game by. So Mm -hmm. um, I think it would be more likely that Auburn was in a little bit more of a dog fight with five minutes left to go in the game than they were up 44 to 15. You know, that's what 44, 17. That's what I'm saying. So I got you. I I could see a scenario where Auburn's up like 24, 10, that Auburn scores and then the Cal scores that Auburn puts the game away. Something like that. Yep. I would take either. I'll take either in a heartbeat. Just get the win. But I do think the messaging, again, sounds like it's been make a statement. Yes. Make a statement. And to me, I don't think you make a statement by winning a four-point game against Cal. Not at, at home. home. No, not at you home. don't. You don't. And if it's if it's a game that's like 17-13, ooh, no, not at all. Yeah, I mean, no, you want to show, like, marked improvement on offense. Mm-hmm. Like, this – and. I mean, obviously, you want the win, but you want to. There, there's some, there's some messaging that you need to send with your play on Saturday, and I think they do it. I think they do it, Daryl. So can't wait to see it. Uh, I'll go live after the game. Daryl and I will do a show that'll drop Sunday morning, the morning after. Both those shows did incredibly well last weekend. Thank you guys so much for stopping by to watch both of those, which is super, super cool. Daryl, how can people check out everything you've got going on? Wednesdays and Fridays here on Locked on Auburn. As you mentioned, Sunday morning as well. Uh, I'll be, I'll be, I'll write a recap article from the press box after the game Saturday. And come hang out at the barn, uh, the barnauburn.com. We have a good time, a great community for all of us just to share the love of Auburn football. Yeah, yep. the barnauburn.com. Come hang out with us there. Please like the video. Please subscribe. We'll see you next time. This has been Locked on Auburn.